My name is uh, David McMaster. I am the pastor of Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church in Chetwin, BC. Uh, it is a privilege to be able to speak uh, about the Word of God to you today. A few years ago, I had the honor of being the best man at a, a wedding for a really good friend of mine. Now, weddings are great. They are both glorifying to God and a joy for us to celebrate alongside the bride and the groom. Now, as the best man, there was a few things that came along with that role. First was that my, my job was ultimately to point to the groom. The, the wedding ceremony, the reception is all centered around the bride and the groom as it should be. Uh, and so as the best man, everything from standing with him to uh, the speech that I, I gave was all to point to the bride and to the groom. The second job is, as best man is to serve and support and help in any way without taking the spotlight. I remember on the day of the, the wedding, uh, right before the ceremony, we'd forgotten something at the house. And, and so I got in my car and I, I went back and I had to go grab it um, and then came back uh, with hopefully without them noticing uh, because my job that day was to serve the bride and groom um, without them worrying about some of those details. The third thing is to celebrate with the groom. Weddings are a great time of rejoicing and glorifying God and toasting and in celebrating. And so as the best man and with all the guests, we were able to celebrate and, and, uh, and do that with them. And so the job of the best man is an important role, but it's, it's also not the spotlight of the wedding. With that in mind, I want to, I want to point you to a passage in, in John 3, 22 to 30. If you have a Bible, I'd love for you to open it and read it with me. It's a powerful picture of how um, our lives are to point to Jesus, who is the, the groom, the bridegroom. So starting in, in verse 22, chapter 3 of John, says this, After this, Jesus and his disciples went to the Judean countryside, where he spent time with them and baptized. John also was baptizing in Anon near Salem because there was plenty of water there. People were coming and being baptized since John had not yet been thrown into prison. Then a dispute arose between John's disciples and a Jew about purification. So they came to John and told him, Rabbi, the one you testified about and who was with you across the Jordan is baptizing and everyone is going to him. John responded, No one can receive anything unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I've been sent ahead of him. He who is the bride is the groom, and the groom's friend who stands by, the, by and listens for him rejoices greatly at the groom's voice. So this joy of mine is complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. Let's start by talking about John the Baptist for a moment. Other passages of scripture tell us that John the Baptist was a prophet, that he was preparing the way for Jesus' ministry on earth. He preached in the wilderness of Judea saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was the fulfillment of the words spoken by Isaiah, which says the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord and make his path straight. We are told that he wore garments of camel's hair, that he uh, had a leather girdle around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. So he was a bit of a, a wild man. Now, John the Baptist's ministry overlaps Jesus' ministry for a time. He had disciples of his own at this time. He was baptizing and preaching repentance, um, and he even baptizes Jesus himself. Jesus says in Matthew 11, 11, I tell you the truth, among those born of a woman, there is not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. And what's interesting is that um, greatness comes through humility. And we see that in John the Baptist's life, his mission and his ministry is all about pointing to Jesus, serving Jesus and rejoicing in Jesus, which again is the, it's the call of a Christian. So let's walk through this passage a bit. Starting in verse 22, After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he remained there with them and was baptizing. John also was baptizing at Anon near Salem, because the water was plentiful there, and the people were coming and being baptized. This tells us that both Jesus' disciples and John's disciples are baptizing at the same time. 
Baptism is, is dunking into water and then bringing them back out. And it's something we practice as Christians today as a representation of being buried with Christ in his death and raised in his resurrection. Verse 25 says, Now a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and a Jew over purification. Which is interesting. For, for the Jew, uh, purification would have been a really important topic. Under Old Testament law, it was necessary for the Jews to keep themselves ceremonially clean if they were to serve God with their lives. And I could imagine John the Baptist, a prophet who's eating locusts and wild honey, living in the bush all his life, preaching repentance probably wasn't the picture that the Jews were expecting from a person preparing the way for the Lord. But what we find out later in Scripture, Scripture, rather, is that purification, particularly in regards to our sin, is ultimately and only purified through Jesus who forgives sins through his death on the cross. So for Christians, purification of sin comes through Jesus and it comes by putting our faith and our trust um, in God who offers mercy towards you and I. Verse 26 And they came to John and said, Rabbi, he who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you bore witness, look, he is baptizing and people are going to him. Notice that there's a bit of jealousy. It's a bit of a competitive spirit. Possibly without realizing it, John's disciples are are, are putting John's ministry into comparison with Jesus' ministry. And it's kind of a, a strange statement for them to say. Hey, the guy that your whole life is, is, is you're pointing to, people are going to him. And that was the whole point of John's ministry, was to prepare a way for the Lord. Prepare people to go to Jesus, point to Jesus. If people are going to Jesus, that means that his ministry was successful. John answered, A person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. I love John's answer. It is a response of a man who knows his place in God's plan who knows the ministry and the mission that he has been called to. If people are going to Jesus to be baptized by his disciples, that means John's ministry was successful. And he reminds his own disciples, I am not the Christ. But instead, I have been called to go before him and to prepare the way for him. He then uses this illustration again of of the bridegroom. And coming back to the, the story at the beginning, what is the job of the best man? First, it's to point to Jesus. Jesus is the bridegroom. John's life, the message that he preached, was all to point to Jesus and his coming kingdom. Second is to serve. John served by baptizing people um, in repentance, preparing the way for people to encounter Jesus as their Lord and as their Savior. The third was to celebrate. John says that his joy is now complete. Ultimate joy and satisfaction comes from Jesus, who is our greatest hope, our greatest treasure. And then he says in these final words, He must increase, but I must decrease. Write those, that, those words down. Those are profound words to live our lives by. He must increase and we must decrease. It's an amazing statement of, of humility. Now, what does, what does this mean for us today? And I have a few observations. First is that we are called as Christians to point our lives to Jesus. As Christians, we've all been given a mission. And, and the great commission found in Matthew um, says that we are to make disciples, teach all that Jesus commanded, and baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we've all been given different giftings and talents and ministry callings to support the mission that Jesus started on earth. But we need to remember, as Christians, it's not a competition. We're working towards the same mission. We are working towards the the same, pointing towards the same person. That person is Jesus. Comparison is only a distraction from the enemy. 
John was called to make a way for the coming king, not to be worried that people were following Jesus instead of his own ministry. And so for us, we need to remember not to compare. God calls some of us to do different things within the kingdom of God. That doesn't make one calling more important than the others. We all have a way of contributing with the goal of Jesus increasing and us decreasing. Our lives are to point to Jesus. And why? Why do they point to Jesus? Because he's the savior of the world. He is our hope. He is the God who was put on human flesh, who lived a perfect and sinless and righteous life. He then died innocently on the cross so that we could have forgiveness of sins, everlasting life with God. And so we point to Jesus with our lives because he is the one that's given us life. He's the one that's given you and I hope. And so again, I love, I love his response. He must increase and I must decrease. Second point is that humility leads to joy and rejoicing. I think John shows us when, when ministry is not build, about building our own kingdoms, when it's not about our own egos, um, or getting as many followers as we can, it frees us up to have joy in the work that God is doing. John's disciples were so focused on themselves that they became stressed out, they became worried rather than rejoicing that people were going to Jesus, which the whole ministry was pointing to. But I think John the Baptist got it right. Joy in Christ starts with humility. He must increase and I must decrease. Humility takes the focus off ourselves and puts it onto the bridegroom. It puts it onto Jesus. I love the way that C.S. Lewis um, explains humility. He says, humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. John was not thinking less of himself, but focusing less on himself. And in doing so, he was able to rejoice in that Jesus was the focus. He was like the best man at the wedding, pointing to the bride and the groom. Our lives are to do the same. Rejoice in Jesus. He is the the hope of the world. He is the one that can forgive sin and give us life. Let him be who we celebrate. He must increase and I must decrease. Profound words. So in summary, let our lives point to Jesus. Let us serve him and his mission in the way he's called us to. Let us rejoice in the hope that we have in Jesus. And let him increase and have ourselves decrease. Let me pray for you. Jesus, we simply ask that you would increase and that we would decrease. Lord, I pray that our lives would point to you, that you would help us to serve your mission with the focus on you because you are our hope. Help us to rejoice in the work that you're doing. Thank you that you died on the cross for our sins and that through faith we can have everlasting life. We love you. We praise you, Jesus, in your powerful name. Amen.